Ryzen 9000 CPUs have been out for a while now and common sense would dictate that if you want the most out of them you're gonna need an X870E motherboard which is AMD's extreme tier of high-end motherboards but what exactly do you get as a benefit for going with those rather than X870 or even something last gen seeing how X670E motherboards have gotten a lot cheaper and unfortunately Team Red hasn't made a process of understanding the differences pretty obvious. Now while X870E motherboards are higher end in the typical sense, i.e. they usually feature more I.O. They are flashier and better looking, have better overclocking capabilities, etc, etc. But a lot of that just comes naturally with higher end boards. But what is specifically different about a chipset? Well, the fact that you get more PCIe lanes is the main factor here, given how you get quite a few more than X870, which is actually a pretty big issue with X870. If you've seen any of my videos about those motherboards, you see how often manufacturers need to have these footnotes about how adding a M.2 drive in this slot will disable this slot, or how adding in some SATA drives will slow this other slot down. And you're not going crazy if you can't remember that being an issue, at least as much before, because X870 this time around actually has less lanes than X670, mainly because a lot of the bandwidth is now being used towards other things, like for example USB 4. And because of it, by AMD's own admission, X870, despite having an X in its name, is more comparable to Intel's H series chipsets, while the only thing really comparable to the higher end Z motherboards for Intel CPUs is X870E only. So yes, AMD really has made things that complicated. But how on earth does any of that actually work? Well, in essence, X870E basically has two chips relaying all of the info back and forth across the motherboard. So besides just having more PCIe lanes and more of just everything in general, more maximum SATA, more maximum USB ports, etc. A lot of the differences are just down to the manufacturer's own discretion. And I kind of pity them because AMD hasn't made a job easy of trying to make these new motherboards different or interesting compared to last gen. And also when it comes to actually differentiating X870 and X870E motherboards. I mean, just look at, for example, Gigabyte's own Aeros Elite, where the extreme and non-extreme are just $30 apart. Well, in reality, they don't really have too many differences between them and what's actually included on the board. But as a wise man once said, the limitations of the chip manufacturer is what drives creativity in the end. I have no idea who said that, it just sounds kind of smart. So all of these companies making motherboards are trying their best to actually differentiate the new stuff from X670 and X670E, while also differentiating X870 from x 870 Good job if you're still keeping track of what is what. And they are doing quite a few new things this generation, like including 5 gigabit Ethernet, tons of fast USB Type-C, new connectors to make plugging stuff into your motherboard easier, etc, etc. Is that going to be worth it to you? Well, only you can answer that question for yourself. But if you are interested in getting one, then we're going to have some linked up in the iCards and down in the video description below. We're also going to find a Patreon, because even a single dollar month truly goes a long way. Plus huge thanks to Gavin Burns, Justin Rage, Ella Vroniak, Roka, Patrick Harrison, not a pseudonym, Mexico. Some lushing all craft and level up. But anyway, that's what it's. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you didn't remember to subscribe, like whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye everyone. Good bye.